Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs. Today with a demonstration of my model of what is known in Germany as the Rheinturm Uhr or Rhine Tower Clock. Now the original is in Düsseldorf, more than uh, 200 meters high. It's a radio tower or telecommunications tower. And when it was built early in the 80s, uh, there was a light artist called Horst H. Baumann. And he had the idea that in the, uh, I think, 61 uh, portholes or bullseyes that were going to be integrated, which you can see here, that this would be ideal to fit a kind of linear decimal clock inside. And he gave it the name Lichtzeitpegel. And that translates approximately to light time level or something like that. Now in the top of the tower there's also a revolving restaurant and um, you of course have this, I don't know what it's called, we call it flight fire or it could be spreading fire so to simply to warn airplanes uh, not to crash into the tower. And, and how can you read the time? Now, here you can see nine LEDs, or in reality, it were originally 100 watt incandescent light bulbs, replaced later with nine watt LED arrays. Now, in the lower nine ones, you can see the seconds counting, and the next group of LEDs here above um, represents the tens of minutes, so uh, tens of seconds. So. This part here is for the seconds and when we get a full minute you will see the yellow uh, or orange LEDs light up for one second. They will do that at the full hour even for a full minute. So I will insert a video when we can see the full hour. So the lower part are the seconds. Then here are the minutes. The ones minutes are at the moment five and the tens minutes is one. So we have minute 15 and here the highest part are the hours uh, so at the moment it's five hours now we already have 16 minutes and so and so many seconds and of course uh, this is a 24 hour clock uh, so you can see i'm recording this uh, quite early in the morning here because at the moment we have hot summer in Germany and uh, the most pleasant time is uh, just early in the morning where it cools down here in the lab a little bit. Um, so as I told you in Germany this tower is uh, and the clock in the tower is very famous and it's uh, situated just 50 kilometers here from the lab and Electron magazine um, th around the year 2000 they had uh, kind of a kit uh, where the PCB was modeled in the shape of the clock, but there were so many things uh, left to be desired that my idea was, okay, I take the original electronics idea uh, from the electro clock and just make it a little bit more realistic so that the proportions of the tower and the extra lights here in the restaurant, etc., uh, are modeled exactly uh, the way they are in the original uh, Rhine Tower clock. And uh, so I built this thing, I don't know, 10 years ago. And I had to pull it out because I'm giving a talk in two months where I uh, will demonstrate some of my kind of special uh, clocks. And I had to look it up if it's still working and all the LEDs are still right. Of course, the PCB is hand wired and it's a mess, uh, but uh, we. We can show the principle how this thing is built and if anyone is interested I will publish the, the schematic and uh, the firmware for the microcontroller. Uh, so anyway uh, that was it for a demonstration. For the rest of the time I will have uh, the clock running exactly at one hour where you can see all the yellow or orange lights already lighting up. And that's also in the original. Every full minute you get the, the red, orange uh, LEDs lighting up for one second. And at the full hour, 
they are lighting up for a whole minute. And also here the fading of the red uh, LEDs to warn airplanes and the flashing of uh, the top LED, um, they are exactly as in the original. Um, so anyway, um, I'll say already goodbye now. Who was interested in uh, the PCB and how the circuit works uh, can still watch the rest of the video. To all other viewers, I say goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and you can also support me on Patreon if you want to build me some more special clocks or show you some of my collections. So until next time, bye from Roger, bye from Kanka Labs. So in the background you can see uh, the original circuit from Electron Magazine from January 2000. And there they used an 89C2051 controller from Atmel. And for the LEDs they used, it was an ICM 7218A. And this thing still had a connection to our timecode long wave broadcasting station which is called DCF 77 broadcasting on 77.5 kilohertz and this is the original PCB they designed which has already the shape of the Rhein Turm or Rhein Tower um, but it does not reflect neither in proportion nor in, in the number of the LEDs exactly how the Lichtzeit pegel, how the clock is realized. First of all, I built the elector clock. Um, you can see here the empty IC socket for the ICM7219. But I exchanged this for an 80 mega 16. Um, this was the original header here, just to connect to the LEDs. I added my own RTC clock built around the Maxim Dallas, I don't know what it's, DS1307 or, or something like that. And the usual periphery for the microcontroller, the quartz crystal with a little trimmer, so that it also runs without the time signal, which comes in here. The clock is running on the quartz frequency as good as possible. Little LDR for automatic dimming. And I even can't remember what this little trim pot is for. And here the, the LEDs reflect the flashing LEDs and the pulsating LEDs. Our little ISP header, at that time still the 10 pin header for the Atmel chip. So that must have been really a long time ago because everybody uses now the 6 pin header. And you can see here glued together with hot glue a secondary PCB uh, with uh, where the LEDs are all directly controlled from from five shift registers and what is this uh, these are HCMOS ICs which can each deliver uh, 10 milliamps or more at their output this is an NPN power transistor I think the BC 140 or something like that I think I used this where um, a lot of LEDs are running in parallel at the same time, which are constantly lit, so they don't need a pin from the microcontroller. And you can see a lot of cabling and the back side of the clock where you can see the plywood and the heavy cabling and a lot of hot glue again. So I simply drilled three millimeter holes put the LEDs inside, um, soldered directly the current limiting resistors to them and tried to make it all work with uh, these dozens of uh, cables here. 
but uh, it has survived until now and you usually don't see the back side of the plywood model so I'm quite happy with that uh, it would be nice to have a 3d metal model um, but that is simply too much for me so that was a look into the uh, schematics and the PCB if you're really interested in it I will try to find the original my hand drawings and uh, the firmware so that you can uh, copy uh, the circuit and the firmware for yourself so that was it thanks for watching until next time bye from roger bye from kanker labs